I've been playing competitive Splatoon 3 for around two months now, and the experience has been absolutely amazing. However, when transitioning into comp, I noticed quite a few challenges that I had to overcome in order to get to where I am today, and I want to talk about that. So not only will I be documenting my progress in competitive Splatoon, but I'll also be giving advice to any aspiring or rising players that want to take the game more seriously and make a name for themselves. With all that out of the way, let's start with the very beginning of my competitive journey. My first few steps into comp happened in a very unexpected way, actually. For some quick context, I have a friend called Nub who is a competitive sticks player, and has been playing comp for about a year. I'm good friends with him as we've been making content together for the last 8 or so months. After leaving a previous team, Nub decided to create an entirely new one called Koi Pond. I won't go into too much detail about Koi Pond yet, but all you need to know is that around 2 months ago some members of the team were quite busy. Having known me and seen my skills, on the night of a tournament, Nub asked me if I could sub in for a member of Koi Pond in this tournament. Tournament. With no prior competitive experience, it was weird being asked such a question, especially considering Koi Pond was a team that had a lot of experience with competitive play, compared to me with absolutely none. No knowledge of callouts, coordinating specials and pushes, taking fights correctly as a team, and much more that I didn't even know I struggled with at the time. But despite all of that, I accepted the offer and the tournament began. I'm not going to say that the matches went perfectly, in fact I probably made hundreds of thousands of mistakes across the entire bracket, but I quickly learned that your first tournament is never going to be your best. Being blissfully unaware is something that's inevitable when you're throwing yourself into a situation with no prior experience. I was really nervous because of this, but despite the constant fear and pressure I felt during the bracket, we won 50% of the sets that we played, which is an insane feat judging by the competition that we went against. For a player who's never done anything like this before in their life, this tournament made me feel something that no amount of X rank or anarchy series could make me feel. Genuine pride at outskilling teams that we had no right winning against. This was even more special considering the anxiety that I had felt before the bracket. The fact that we were able to push through all of that and beat some teams ranked higher than us really motivated me to keep playing, and since the team saw potential in me, I kept on subbing in when I needed to, which actually turned out to be the majority of the time that we played. I'm not going to try and pretend that continuing to play on from that point was easy, and at this point began the transition between casual and competitive competitive Splatoon. No longer could I just run at backliners assuming they'll miss, or take 1v3s assuming I'd win. It was like an entire new level of depth to the game was introduced to me, and I want to go further into this, as from talking to other players, this is a very common problem that occurs when you first get into competitive. When you play solo queue, I like to imagine two distinct aspects of the game that you have to take into account. One of which being your mechanics, being things like movement and your aim, and another being decision making, which is determining what you do at what times. Both of these denominations intertwine with each other, you are able to make more risky decisions if you can outplay the other team in disadvantageous positions. And similarly, if you fight a team that's better than you mechanically, outplaying them by making the best decisions, such as when and where to take fights, can really turn the tide in your favour. There are more subcategories of play that you need to consider, such as matchup knowledge, but those are the main two I see. In competitive, you strive to be better at these two things than your average solo queue player, but on top of that, there's a third completely new denomination of Splatoon that you have to take into account, being callouts, and more broadly, team play. It's not that you weren't doing this in ranked, playing as a team and communicating with the d-pad are things you should be doing even a little bit, but it is so much more important and difficult to learn and manage in a competitive setting. This is because you have to focus on what you're doing, movement and aim wise, and make rational decisions, and focus on your three other teammates communicating any information and decisions you're making to them. This can be really difficult to do at first, and I know many lower level and new players find it difficult to get into this. From my and many others' experiences, people sacrifice their mechanics and decision making skills to make room for team play and coordination instead. It's very difficult to balance these three divisions of competitive play, and upon entering the comp scene, you will almost definitely feel like it's weighing you down. But my advice to you is to just keep on practicing. Eventually things will click, and it takes varying amounts of time per person. But trust me, you'll get out of that process soon enough, and yes, it will feel amazing. This was admittedly the biggest thing holding me back when I got into competitive, but I'm not the only one who had issues initially. That's why I brought Zorconic along to share his experiences and even give a few more tips as well. Starting out competitive was undoubtedly difficult. I had no idea where to go, who to talk to, or how it worked. I stuck with my friends, whom we called ourselves VHS, for years, and we only played ranked and entered official Nintendo tournaments. It wasn't until 2023 that I found out about the real comp scene thanks to more interactions on Twitter, and we finally started to scrim and enter regular tournaments. We never got any results and eventually broke up so we could each pursue different journeys in competitive. I've been on a couple different teams, climbing to mid-level since the beginning of 2020 
2023, and as of now, I found my home on Honda Squiddick, a Season 14 Division 4 team. But it wasn't easy getting to this point, as I've put in a lot of time, energy, and grinding to get to it. When I was starting out, all I thought about was winning, my kills, and that's it. But there's so much more to competitive than that. For me, it's about the match itself. What did we do well if we won that enabled us to win? What did we do poorly? If we lost, what should we have done? What did we do poorly then? It's about fixing you and your team and getting better so that the next scrim or tournament you don't make those same mistakes and can get better. In a match, you must constantly think about your movement, aim, weapons, play style, callouts, and what your team is doing so you can optimally play at your best. You won't get anywhere if you go into a scrim, don't think, and act surprised when you lose. It's the same with your mental. Having a poor mental in Splatoon is detrimental to how you and your team play. Many little things like this must be considered, but don't let it overwhelm you. If you're starting out, do one thing at a time. If you don't know callouts, learn those before you fix your aim. Worried about your mental? Focus on being positive and thinking during and after a match instead of callouts or aim. Work on one thing at a time, and once it's in a comfortable spot, move on to the next thing. And make sure that you don't just practice something until you get it right, but practice it until you don't get it wrong, because competitive is about practice and consistency. Zorconic's story is a long one, starting all the way back in Splatoon 2, and slowly building up to his status as a Div 4 player today. However, not everyone starts out this slowly, and in the case of my friend Nub, his journey to Div 4 happened in under a year. Yes, this is the same Nub that got me into competitive in the first place, and when I told him about this video, he seemed quite eager to help out. So that's why I decided to bring Nub along as well to share his competitive story. Take it away. Hello, I'm Nub, and I've been playing stick controls in competitive Splatoon for almost a year now. Getting into comp is rather rough, to say the least. When I first learned of the comp scene's existence, I started looking into different Discord servers and other resources to help me find people to play competitive with and to learn a bit about the competitive scene. I ended up putting out a post on a Discord server called Splatoon Stronghold, looking to see if anyone would want to teach me the ropes on how to play competitively. And I forgot about it a few days later. But... I randomly got a DM from now one of my good friends if I would like to try out for a new team they were making. When I tried out for my first ever scrim, I got completely curb stomped. I lost every single game. From the scrim, I realized just how different competitive was to solo queue. Players were more mechanically skilled, more aware, and teams were coordinated. But after that scrim, I kept my head up. I kept seeing how I could get better and how I could improve. And I ended up passing my tryout and joined my first ever team, Mero. Throughout my time on Mero, I won tournaments, caused upsets, made friends, and had an absolute blast. But we sadly had to disband in May. Over the next few months, I spent my time playing in pickups and projects and meeting many new people. During this time, I learned more and more about the competitive scene, how tournaments were run, how scrims worked, how Ludi worked, and how to improve myself as a player. After many months, I finally found my home at Koi Pond, where I managed to climb my way from from low level into mid level. Getting this far was far from easy. It took a lot of time, effort, and dedication. When starting out in competitive, I highly recommend looking around for resources to help you, whether it be Discord servers, YouTube videos, or VODs of previous tournaments. Also, try talk to people. Ask more experienced competitive players about the scene and their past experiences. And don't be scared to ask how something works. I want to give a huge shout out to Nub and Zorconic for helping me out with this video. They were both absolutely amazing to work with in their own right. I hope these two stories and ranges of tips inspire you, or help you with giving competitive play a shot. It does take time and practice, but I can assure you that it is worth it. This video is far and away one of my favorites that I've ever produced, so I hope that you enjoyed it enough to warrant the 50 hours that I spent on it. But with all of that out of the way, make sure to take care and have a good day.